Chapter 14. Carmela twisted a damp tissue around and around in her lap. Every now and then she dabbed at her nose. I can't hardly stand to face the day anymore, she said. I couldn't even go to work today. How come, Toby said. I gave him a nudge with my knee. We sat squeezed together between piles of junk on Carmela's couch. The window shades were drawn. Tiny sparkles of dust danced in a narrow beam of sunlight that slanted across the dark room. Carmela shook her head. Gertie says she hasn't got that kind of money, but I know she does. Why won't she give it to you, I said. Because she's selfish, that's why. I watched a fly land on a greasy pizza box on the coffee table. That's mean, I said. She never did like dogs. Carmela blew her nose and waved her hand at the fly. What are you going to do, I said. Carmela flopped back against the pillow tucked behind her in the chair. She propped her feet up on a ripped vinyl footstool and rested her hands on her stomach. (coughs) Then she closed her eyes and made weird little moaning noises. Toby twirled his finger around his ear, making a sign like Carmela was crazy. I frowned at him and shook my head. What are you going to do? I repeated a little louder. Carmela shook her head, making her ripply skin, ripply chin jiggle like jello. I just want to die, she said. Toby clamped his hand over his mouth like he was trying to stifle a laugh, and I didn't see what was so funny. You can't die, I said. Willie needs you. Carmela's eyes popped open. She sat up straight and slapped her knee. You're right, she said. Willie does need me. I grinned. So what are you going to do? I'm going to put those signs up. That's what I'm going to do, she said. Reward signs, Toby said. (laughs) She nodded. Yep. But what about the money? I said, where are you going to get the money? I'll just be like Scarlett O'Hara, Carmela said. Who's that? Toby said. You know, from Gone with the Wind. I guess me and Toby looked confused because she went on to explain about Scarlett O'Hara, about how she was this lady in a movie who said fiddle dee dee and who worried about things tomorrow instead of today. Then Carmela pushed herself up out of the chair and shuffled over to a rickety (coughs) card table. Will y'all help me put these signs up? She waved a stack of papers at us. I made copies with Willie's picture. She smiled down at the signs in her hand. Toby looked at me, and when I said, sure, he said, sure. Carmela gave us a little box of tacks and then grabbed her purse and car keys. Come on, she said, let's go. Carmela drove, and me and Toby jumped out at every corner to tack a sign up. Toby was scared Mama was going to see us when we got near the coffee shop, but I told him just to hush up and stop worrying. Of course, I knew he was right. She might see us. But I had so many other things weighing me down that I didn't have room in my worried mind for Mama. With every sign I put up, that question that I'd been trying to push away kept popping back at me. The question was this. What in the world are you doing, Georgina? By the time we were done, it seemed like there wasn't one street in Darby that didn't have a sign tacked up somewhere. On nearly every corner, Willie's face gazed out at the world with his head cocked in that adorable way of his. It liked to broke my heart to look at it. I feel better already, Carmela said when she turned onto Whitmore Road and into her driveway. I have this feeling in my bones that my little Willie is going to be coming home any minute now. But what about the money, I said. Carmela flapped her hand at me. Oh, fiddle-dee-dee, she said. I'll worry about that tomorrow. When Mommy got off work that night, she drove us over to the Pizza Hut and told us to go on in and wash up. (coughs) Then we sat in the parking lot and ate corned beef sandwiches and dill pickles. Mama seemed real happy and excited, going on and on about how she's making all kinds of money. She showed me and Toby an envelope stuffed, stuffed with dollar bills. I'm stashing this under the spare tire in the trunk, she said, but it's just for emergencies, okay? Is that enough money to pay for an apartment, I said, pulling that fat off my corned beef and tucking it into a napkin for Willie? Not quite, she said, but it won't be long now. How long? I popped a piece of chewing gum in my mouth. Not long, Mama said. How long? Not long, Mama said in a mean voice. Yeah, right. I rolled my eyes and pulled chewing gum in a long, stretchy string out of my mouth. Mama whipped around to face me. I stuck my chin up and looked her square in the eye, twirling my gum around like a jumping rope. She turned back around and slumped low in the front seat. Toby licked his fingers with smacking sounds and said, Maybe me and Georgina can get some money. I like to swallow my gum when he said that. Mama looked at him and smiled that real sweet smile like she always seems to have for him but never for me. Now, how in the world would you and Georgina get money, sweetheart? She said. 
Here it comes, I thought. I knew Toby was going to mess up sooner or later. I braced myself for what was going to come next, waiting for Toby to tell Mama about Willie and Carmella and all. I tried to give him the evil eye, but he wouldn't look at me. I don't know, he said. Maybe we could find some. Mama chuckled. Wouldn't that be nice? Yeah, Toby said. Yeah, Toby, I said. Be sure and let us know when you find a million dollars on the sidewalk, okay? Mama shot me a look, but Toby grinned and said, okay. We finished up our supper, and when Mama drove around looking for a place to park for the night, the car was chugging and rattling and jerking like crazy, but she acted like she didn't even notice. As we pulled into the parking lot of the Motel 6, I spotted one of Carmela's signs. Suddenly, that greasy corned beef in my stomach didn't sit too well. I lay down on the seat and curled into a ball, then I closed my eyes and pretended to be asleep. Later on, after Mama and Toby had fallen asleep, I pulled out my How to Steal a Dog notes. I read through every page. When I got to the part that said, you will have to wait and see what happens next, I got out my colored pencils and drew little flowers and hearts all around the edge of the page. Then I used a sky blue pencil to write again. You will have to wait and see what happens next. I looked out the window at the Motel 6. Inside the lobby, a man was watching TV and sipping from a coffee mug. A soda machine outside the door sent a flickering red glow across the parking lot. I wished we could have got a room there just for one night. We could stretch out on a real bed, take a bath in a real tub, act like real people. We didn't have school tomorrow, so we could spend all day watching TV and stuff, but Mama had said no. I looked over at Toby, curled up on the back seat with his head propped against the door. I hadn't told him about Mookie yet. I knew he'd get all scared and worried. He'd say we weren't supposed to talk to strangers and Mama would kill us and stuff like that. And I guess he would be right. But what choice did we have? We couldn't just forget about Willie, could we? We had to feed him and take care of him. Besides, Mookie was probably gone by now. Toby wouldn't ever even know he'd been there. I closed my notebook and stuffed it back down inside my bag. Then I lay down on the car seat and closed my eyes. No sense worrying about Mookie tonight, was there? I could worry about him tomorrow.